Hey, Stampers! <clears throat> How are you? It's Wednesday night. Time for me to go live again. Make sure my hair looks nice for you guys, huh? Just going to log on here and make sure um, I'm on and I can see everybody's comments. So bear with me a minute here. Okay, so as you guys come on and visit during my live, make sure you say hello. Hi, Leanne. Um, say hello. Tell me where you're from. I love to see where everybody is from. And um, lately, I like to ask about the weather because now we're in that kind of weird time of year where it's not quite spring here in Wisconsin, but it might be spring other places, and then I'm really jealous. So, um, yeah, so make sure you tell me where you're from, and I love it when you guys interact with me. So please, as I'm stamping, uh, ask any questions that you have about products, about the techniques. That's what I'm here for, is to help you out. Hi, Charlene. Glad you could make it. Uh, so don't be shy. Ask away. Tonight I am planning to show you a few ideas for uh, watercoloring. And, you know, watercoloring really is a technique. Um, hi, Sandy. Watercoloring is a technique that, um, oh boy, I could probably take four or five lives and show you different watercoloring techniques, but I'm just going to show you a few this week. And I think that um, maybe I'll just continue the series um, if we have enough interest in it. Uh, <clears throat> so my week, I was not live last week because my day job took up lots of my time. Um, you might remember me telling you that I'm a credit manager, so that means I say yay or nay to customers' um, credit lines. And we've just had a really, really hectic, like two and a half weeks at work. Hi Sue, glad to hear that you love watercoloring. I hope that what I'm gonna show you tonight uh, gives you some tips. Uh, definitely what I show you is gonna be easy. Uh, but anyway, so we've had a really hectic couple of weeks. There's some stuff transitioning, and I've been working, like, insane hours. Um, so last week I didn't have time to kind of go live, and this week I promised I would make time to go live because I love to do this. But here's the deal. I prepared my projects this weekend. So I think I prepared them Saturday and it's now Wednesday. So I'm hoping I still remember <laughs> what I did. Um, either way, stamping to prepare the projects this weekend and stamping with you guys tonight. Um, it's, it's therapy for me. It's creative therapy. So especially if you're the kind of person who has a day to day job, I don't know how many of you out there, uh, think this, but if you're using stamping as stress relief, like, please just say, yes, I do that too. So I don't feel like I'm crazy. I, I know that I'm not crazy because I know there's others out there, but especially if you have the kind of job that's the same thing day in and day out, it feels really nice to, um, have a project that you start and finish and you can see that you make progress on. So that's what stamping is to me. Um, it gives me a creative outlet for my day-to-day -day crunching numbers, making decisions kind of job. Um, also this week, my poor scout, so you might remember last time I went live, I told you how she was in heat and she was trying to make 
puppies <laughs> with everything. She wanted to make puppies with our pillows and our floor and the trees and stumps outside. It was crazy. But anyway, um, she had a little troubles going to the bathroom this week. So I worked from home on Monday so I could take her to the vet. I feel so bad for her. Uh, but now she's really stinky. So <laughs> we're dealing with that. Any of you who have dogs know that uh, it's definitely a roller coaster ride with dogs and <laughs> taking care of them. But uh, she had some issues with her glands being impacted and hopefully um, that's getting resolved. Charlene says, oh yeah, after a long day at work, it is really nice. It kind of allows the stress to roll off of you when you're you're stamping. So I'm glad that other people use it as a, a therapeutic outlet. Um, it's really helped me a lot. Just ask my husband. He knows when I'm not stamping because I'm crabby. <laughs> So he likes it when I'm stamping, even though that means I might not have as much time to make dinner. He's like, I can tell you haven't been stamping. Go in your craft room. Yes, I will do that. Um, I never mind when he says that. So um, what else? So coming up this week, tomorrow I'm in a blog hop with the One Stamp at a Time crew. So make sure that you are checking out my blog and my Facebook page tomorrow. So we go, um, we blog hop once a month and we each create a card and a 3D project. I'm not going to show you what they are, but I think you're going to really like my projects tomorrow. And I have a video for them, even the 3D projects. So for those of you who like to make little boxes or trinkets or 3D items, make sure you check that out because you're going to get a lot of great ideas. Also, what else is coming up for me this week? Oh, um, this weekend I'm heading to my hometown, Wisconsin Rapids, to spend some time with my family. John and I are going for the day. My uncle, uh, unfortunately, has a rare lung disease and we're having a benefit Um my cousins are having a benefit for him. So sometime between now and Saturday, I plan to pack up a ton of cards with some envelopes. And um, I like to donate my cards that I make to like the basket raffles. And so they're going to have a basket raffle there. So I'm going to um, <clears throat> box up my cards. My mom does crochet. Actually, my mom is a, she's a really talented crafter. I don't know if you've noticed this wall hanging behind me here. Let me see if I can. Okay. My mom made this. So it's a wall hanging with all sorts of different crafts. I also do sewing. Isn't that cool? Um, and so my mom made that and she She's going to crochet a fabric basket for the cards. So if you're in Wisconsin Rapids area this weekend and you're looking for something to do on Saturday, you should stop out because that would be really great and, of course, a great cause. So, um, prizes. I think we should do prizes and I think we should do, um... Oh, what else? We have to do one other thing I'm thinking. Oh, swap cards. This is what happens when I have a big week at work. My brain gets fried. So let's do swap cards and then let's do prizes. So first, just a reminder on prizes. You can win a prize by placing an order, by sharing my video, by commenting on my video. So... If you place an order, use my host code. I'm gonna when I flip the camera over, you're gonna be able to see my host code and my website to place an order. If your order is a hundred under hundred fifty dollars, use the host code. If it's not, then skip the host code. Still place your order with me, and you'll be entered to win. Um, but you'll get to keep the Stampin' Rewards then for your hundred fifty dollar order. Now here's the deal. I set up a customer rewards program. When you're on my blog, 
across the top of my blog, there's some tabs. One of them says Rustic Rewards. If you go there, you can get a printout of a Rustic Rewards sheet. Keep track of all the orders you place with me under my host code, and when they add up to $150, I think it is, you get $15 in free product. So this is the way of helping you to get Stampin' Rewards on a budget. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure that you check that out. So I'm going to flip you around now so we can look at some swap cards. And if you get motion sickness, close your eyes because I don't want anyone getting sick here. Oop, I almost tipped over my stand. Okay. Lighting looks okay. All right. So all of these cards, we're going to go through this. All of these cards were using the Picture Perfect stamp set in the Occasions catalog. I got into a swap with some demonstrator friends of mine. And basically what we do is we take the a stamp set or a bundle and we make a bunch of projects with it to give each other and some of our friends ideas. And then we can use these cards to send out. If you're interested in getting into a swap, talk to your other Stampin' Friends. It's a really good way to get a variety of cards um, in your collection. So first card here is a fun fold. I think that's cute. This is pretty simple. You're just going to need to cut that square, and when you open it up, it's not your typical card. So that one's really pretty. This one uses our designer series paper. I love how she used the gold foil paper, and um, she heat embossed with gold embossed powder here to kind of bring that gold all the way through. This is such an elegant, rich-looking card. She left that one blank. That's fine. Let's see. This one used the um, designer series paper. What I like about this one is some of these six by six um, DS the designer series paper. Once you cut it off, you're gonna have this strip of paper. Well, what the heck are you gonna do with it? So she glued it on the inside of her card so that she could bring the design from the front to the inside. So that's just a little tip for you for these strips. If you're wondering what the heck to do with those really pretty strips, you can bring them to the inside of your card and coordinate it with the front. Oh, the other thing I love here is that mini sequin trim kind of behind that circle layer is pretty. Okay, this one, I don't want to glare, so I'm gonna to try to take it out of this package. They use that, um, I think it's called Pinewood Plank um, embossing folder. And this is Bermuda Bay with the black, I think looks really nice. And here she did the same thing. Took a strip of the designer series paper and brought those colors in to match the front. And that is a very sharp card. It really pops, the colors pop well together. This one my friend Kelly made, and this one I love the saying. They say if someone forgets your birthday, you don't get any older that year. I love that. And of course she used the new sequins that you can just stick right on, and the designer series paper again. This is another one where the colors just really pop well together. That Bermuda Bay and the black go really nice. And she used the strips of designer series paper on the inside. So just remember, you don't always have to stop at stamping the outside of your card. Stamping the inside works really nice too. And if you are wondering about that perfect saying and you just can't find something, uh, my friend Julie gave me a tip. She likes to print out verses from that she's come up with or on the internet. She prints them out onto some paper and then she'll glue that to the inside so she's got a unique verse uh, for the inside of her card. And so that's just another idea for you as well. Okay, so here we're using some designer series paper again. These strips here are actually 
washi tape. I think that's really neat. Good way to use up that washi tape, which I always collect and never seem to use. Uh, that's what I should do a live on so that I make sure to use my washi tape. Let's see, my friend Amy made this card. And she's got some layers here. I love these delicate lace. I think what delicate lace. I don't remember what they're called, but they're doilies to me. And this ribbon. Again, with the black, we've got a nice bold pop of color and these sequins again. I love that one. And this one looks like it's going to be a fun fold too. Yes, it is. This is super cool. And this would be really easy. Your designer series paper is going to go a long ways here because you're just using a few pieces of it. <clears throat> and then, of course, that ribbon with the shimmery edge. One of my favorite ribbons, which I actually just bought the other day because I was out. So those are my swap cards. And let's move them out of the way. Now for prizes. Okay, so first we have prizes for uh, the comments. And so what I'm giving away is the cards I made in my last live. Remember in my last live we took um, a design and I used the same basic layout for inspiration to make our four cards. And so the four cards that I made on my live is what I'm giving away. And this is going to Sue Bonnet. So Sue wins these for her comments. So thanks so much, Sue. And the next prize I have is for sharing my live video. And when we were making the cards, last time, not last week, I would say two weeks ago now, I gave you some ideas for other color combinations to use with this really clean and simple um, dragonfly cards. And this is my prize for the share of my live video. And the winner of that is Mattia or Mattia, I'm not sure how to say the name, Mattia Rupp. So, um, Mattia, I need your uh, address, so if you want to pop me an email, um, which is countrycardsbyrose at gmail.com, and send me your address, I'll get these in the mail to you. And then finally, the winner for placing an order is going to get this Myths and Magic Designer Series Paper. This is a huge stack of designer series paper and it's glittery and diamondy and shiny and I love it. And the winner for placing an order is Anne Wilcox. So thank you very much for your order, Anne. You are the winner of this designer series paper. Okay, so we got prizes out of the way. What do you say we get stamping, huh? Okay. I'm going to get my supplies out here. The first card we're going to make is using the A Good Day stamp set. Now remember, I made these this weekend, so if I forget what I did, I am missing my aqua painters. Black. Okay, I think I have everything I need here. I can't say that it's exactly organized, but I've got it all. Okay, so. We're going to use the A Good Day stamp set. I love this one. It's in the Occasions catalog. Now this coordinated with 
um, a scalloped circle punch. And um, I'm not using that circle punch, but we are using the one and a half inch circle punch for this project. So I'm going to get started. Now, when you're watercoloring, I use the basic black ink pad. In the new catalog, I'm not sure that they have this one. I think they're bringing back the stays on ink pad. That might be the one that we have to use for watercoloring because you want something permanent. I'm going to double check on that because I actually never really used stays on very much when um, it was around before it retired. So I'm using the sunshine stamp that says bring on the sunshine and there's some clouds with the sun and raindrops here. And I'm stamping this onto a scrap of watercolor paper. By the way, I save every bit and piece of my watercolor paper because you can, especially now, there's a lot of small stamps. You really can use it for a lot of different projects. <clears throat> now the first watercolor method I'm going to show you, and hopefully you can see it because it is a little bit small here. We're going to watercolor this sun, okay? So when you watercolor, you're going to want a set of our aqua painters. These come uh, two pens in a set, and one of them has, see if you can see these, one of them has a broader brush tip and one is a finer tip for getting into the details. The caps, one is blue and one is white, so you can remember which is which. I interchange them, so I really don't have a cap for a specific color. Now the way these work is this top part just screws off and you've got a reservoir here where you can put your water in. You just fill it up, you know, under the sink or if you've got a glass or something like that, you fill it up with water. And this reservoir is plastic and it's kind of squeezy. It's got some give to it. So what you are going to want to do as you're uh, watercoloring is you squeeze out enough of the water to be the right wetness for your project. I need to grab some paper towels here. When you watercolor, you're always going to want a paper towel handy because if this gets too wet, you need to be able to dry it off. So one of the methods for watercoloring is to use the lid of your ink pad. So when your ink pad is closed, you just squeeze it together so that the ink from the pad transfers from the pad onto the lid. And now this is going to be like our painter's, do you call that palette? I think it's called a palette. And so what I'm doing here is squeezing my watercolor pen to make sure I've got some water and just kind of testing how wet it is. My favorite method when I am watercoloring is to, with a wet brush tip that is not inked up, I like to first come in and just get the area that I'm painting wet. Now what that does is help to make blending a little easier because the ink is going to want to go where the water is and it will help you, one, to stay in the lines and it will help kind of soften that ink color so that blending is easier. So all I've done is kind of dipped my brush tip into the ink and now we've got a solid color. I'm using crushed curry, just the solid crushed curry for the sun. Now if you want to do some some blending or bring in some darker colors, I just go 
back to my palette here where the um, colors are darker and I haven't spread it out with water. I pick up some color and I bring it onto my project. This is probably hard to see, but I'm going to bring it up here that you can see the sun kind of has some depth and dimension to it because it's got some dark colors here by the clouds. Okay, once you are done, oh, my computer froze, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm still live. Yep, I am. And refresh this so that I can see your questions. If you have them, bear with me here. Okay, once you're done watercoloring, you just take your brush, clear out the ink, and you're all set. Okay, we're actually done with our yellow here. <clears throat> okay, now the next, so this is doing some watercolor coloring. The next method I'm going to show you, and we're going to be using both of them on this card, is a watercolor wash. So when we colored in those intricate details of that sun, we used our um, fine tip brush. For a watercolor wash, I typically like to use my um, wide tip brush. I like to make sure it's good and wet. Now I'm using watercolor paper again. And I'm going to get my paper very wet. A pool of water on there. Now again, I'm using... Um, my ink pad, I'm pressing the pad into the cover of my ink pad. This color I'm using is Tempting Turquoise. This color is leaving. So if you love this color, make sure that you get it before uh, they're sold out. Because this is one of the colors that is being replaced in our color revamp, in the Stampin' Up! color revamp. Okay, so my brush is good and wet. I like to do in my watercolor wash because remember, the base of my card is good and wet here. I like to just kind of blot it on. And I'm bringing in some darker colors. The edges are rough. When I'm done, I can squeeze some of that water out and get that color out of my brush. And now I'm sitting here with a pool of color on my, on my uh, layer. Well, we need that to dry. So this is where our heat tool comes in handy. I'm just going to... Get this to dry. Now, as you're using as you're using the heat tool, you can kind of watch your pool of water move around. So I'm using the heat tool to direct some of the darker color where I want it to go.
So you can see as this dries, it's creating, whoops, some dark and lighter gradients in our watercolor wash. I've got one stubborn area here that just does not want to dry. Okay. Okay, and so I like to make sure this is nice and dry and I'll flatten it out. So this is how you create a watercolor wash. Now if you wanted to get some darker areas or if you wanted to bring in another color, you could do the exact same process and you could bring in a color maybe here or around the edges. After this is completely dry, you can bring in darker layers or other colors. For this one, I'm just going to leave it as is. And now we're ready to start putting our card together. So before you stamp on over the top of any wash, you're going to want to make sure it's nice and dry. And so I am coming in with the, it looks like a glass of lemonade or a delicious tropical fruity drink. And I'm just stamping that in the background here. I am so ready for nice warm weather that uh, I had to make a summery card. This is where my bring on the sunshine comes in. Now for those of you using punches, I hope you know this tip. When you're punching out something you've stamped, be looking at the open end of the punch so you can line this up and make sure that you're stamping in the right area. And now we're ready to do our layers. When I'm working with watercolor paper, especially with the watercolor wash, I like to use my liquid glue because it really can grab all the nooks and crannies and hold it really tight. So I'm just mounting that to a piece of basic black. Now when I post the replay of my Facebook Live on my blog and YouTube, um, in my blog I will list the dimensions for all the layers of my cards. And my blog is countrycardsbyrose.com. I usually try to get that out <clears throat> by the weekend. Uh, but with my schedule so hectic, I can't really promise that, but I will try. I promise I'll try really hard. Okay. We're going to mount this to a tempting turquoise <clears throat> card base and... I want to bring these tropical glasses onto my card base, too. I think these are really, really fun. Okay. Now, I had some crushed curry ribbon, but I think instead I want to use some baker's twine. So I'm going to come in, just tie And 
remember my uh, trick to tying your baker's twine is tie it, use your finger to secure it down, tie it in a knot first. Oh my gosh, I have this end way too long. And then tie it in a bow. That just keeps it from moving around on you. And then after it's tied, I like to trim the edges. And need some dimensionals. And put dimensional on the back of our bring on the sunshine and I'm also going to pop up this layer get that centered Again, my tip for centering, I like to look at the side and the top, and if they look the even, even width to me, then I know it's centered. So here's the front of our card, cute. I want to stamp something on the inside too. So I'm going to use the saying from the stamp set. It says, here's to a good day, and I like this beautiful tree with a swing on it. I'm going to stamp this in the corner. I'm going to do this a little different than I usually do. Stamp this in the bottom of the card. Oh my gosh, I did it upside down. Ha! Ah, funny. Well, flip it around. That happens. You know what? Here, we're going to flip this over. That's why paper has two sides. My friend Stephanie yelled at me because I didn't have the stickers and she stamped upside down and she said, well, most stampers put the stickers so they know what way is up. Well, it happened to me now too. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to mount our layer and then we'll just mount this to our card base on the inside. Again, I'm doing the same thing, lining up the tops and the sides. If it's the same width, then I know that it's centered. And our first card for the evening is complete. Cute. It makes me think of summer with a, a really refreshing, tempting turquoise watercolor wash. Our sunny day telling Mother Earth to bring on the sunshine. So what do you think? What do you think about watercolor wash? Not too difficult, huh? I think that's pretty easy. And uh, it really adds a lot of flair to the background of your card. Okay, how about we move on? Oh, here, I used the yellow ribbon for my practice card. So here's an idea of how to kind of bring out the yellow of that sunshine. With the Crushed Curry um, Chevron ribbon, it's called. So if you're not into the white, here's an example of using the yellow ribbon. Okay, let me clean up my 
project here a bit and let's move on to the next one. Okay, I have had a lot of people lately asking me about our watercolor pencils. So I wanted to make sure that I show you a project with those. I really think you're going to like this one. This is super, super easy. And it's a good way to look like a professional watercolor. The, the technique I'm going to show you uh, really makes you look professional. <laughs> Sue says, I, now I want a bonfire and a drink. You and me both, Sue. If you get the bonfire going, I'll head over. <clears throat> All right. So... This card, we're going to use my favorite stamp set from the Occasions catalog, We Must Celebrate. I love this one. This stamp set is retiring. So if you love it, get it now. It is going away. You will never see it again. And I'm telling you, these little animal friends are too adorable not to be in your stash. They are cute. Okay, now for this card, instead of using watercolor paper for my watercoloring, I'm using shimmery white paper. So that's one thing I want to explain to you. You can watercolor on watercolor paper. You can watercolor on plain whisper white, although you can't do a watercolor wash on the plain whisper white paper. That's going to um, start pilling and it's not going to look nice. You can also do some really nice watercoloring on our shimmery white cardstock. Um, and this actually, I'm trying to move it around in the light so you can see it's got a sheen to it and a little bit um, sparkly. And it just does really good at making sure the water doesn't kind of sink in there. Um, so it's it's good for watercoloring. Okay. So let's start by stamping our adorable little friends here. Again, I'm using the basic black archival ink. If you like this, it's retiring, so make sure you get it before the color revamp. I'm telling you, these inks are going to fly off the shelves, so do not be stuck without your ink. Once they're gone, they are gone. All right. Oh, aren't they so cute? They're just adorable. I am going to, whoops, I got some ink on my finger that I need to, see, I need to wash that off, otherwise it's going to get all over my project here. Now, this basic black ink takes a little bit longer to really set on your paper and dry compared to the Memento or our other ink pads. So you want to make sure that it's good and dry before you start watercoloring because you're not going to want that black to bleed. Okay. So, watercolor pencils, they look just like a regular colored pencil. I'm going to use Let's see, chocolate chip, Calypso Coral, and Basic Gray. So the method I'm going to show you here does some really simple shading. And all we're going to do is take our watercolor pencil and we're going to outline the lines that um, 
outlines of our stamps. So I'm just going along there with my watercolor pencil. I'm just following along the lines here. And we'll do the same with his head. Okay. Next, we've got our raccoon. Following along all the lines and contours of where I stamped. Now, I'm sure you're looking at this and you're thinking, uh, Rose, you don't look like a professional at all. But I promise you, this will look nice when we're done. It'll be like magic. So I'm going around the outside of his belly. Okay, now we've got our bear. Again, I'm just outlining all of the ink edges just on the inside of the outline with my watercolor pencil. If I get too far away from the edge, then I always kind of come back in and make sure that I fill in that area. And then this is my Calypso Coral. I'm going to color in the nose completely. And I'm not going to go on the outside. I'm only going to go on this one line of the tail. So now we are going to get our aqua painter and I want the fine tip brush. Hi Kathy! So I'm just testing it to make sure I've got the right amount of water in there. And I'm going to start coloring in my stamp lightly with my brush. Now, do you notice how, are you guys able to see this? I might be too far away. I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to zoom in here. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Crap, it doesn't let me zoom. Okay, well, I'll bring it closer after I'm done coloring. So as we color this, it takes these pencil marks and turns it into watercolor that you are able to spread into the open areas. And it's creating some gradient shading here that makes you look like a professional colorer. Can you see that? Okay, so we don't want to mix colors, so after I'm done with my first critter, who I used um, early espresso on him, I'm cleaning off my brush tip so I don't bring that color into my next animal here. And I'm just lightly going with my brush, grabbing the color from the outside edge, and I'm blending it towards the open white space. And again, what that's doing is creating a color gradient 
but make some shading. I forgot to do his tail. So now because most of our color is here where we had our pencil, as we go away from it, the coloring gets lighter and we've got some nice shading. You see that? Okay, now we got to clean out our brush again and we're on to our bear. This one is bigger, so I'm hoping you'll be able to see the shading a bit better as I'm going along here. So it's picking up that color and I'm blending it towards the open space. I hated bear. I forgot to go by his belly. And if you've got a clump of color, just smooth it out. And just drag that color to blend and shade it. Can you, can you see that? How that's blended and shaded. Okay, so now we're on to the bunny. Now, for the rabbit, I am not going to blend all the color towards the center. I'm just going to go along the edges and soften where I used the colored pencil. So I'm not going to blend it completely. I'm just going to use it as a very light outline so that this rabbit has just a touch of color. Not fully colored in. So you can choose with these colored pencils how much or how little color you want in there. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is, I don't want them looking like they're floating in space, so I'm going to take my old olive and I'm going to just come in here and color some ground where these guys are standing. And then again, we're coming back in with our aqua painter. We're softening that color, blending it a bit. And we're giving some of those shadows and a ground to our friends. So what do you think? Cute, huh? It's pretty easy. Just outline with that colored pencil and then bring your aqua painter in. Now we're ready to put our card together. So I'm going to use, I'm using an old olive card base. And this, I don't know if you would call this a fern. 
I'm gonna stamp this fern in the background. Turn it around. There is absolutely no rhyme or reason to what I'm stamping here. Just getting some interesting background going. And then filling in. All right. And now I'm ready to bring in my watercolor piece. So my card. Doesn't that look cute with the old olive? Oh my gosh, I don't even have this. Oh yeah. There. It wasn't straight. Thank goodness for liquid glue. It's very forgiving. Hi Frank. Thanks Charlene. Thank you Leanne. I'm glad you like it. Okay, so let's get our ribbon and I'm going to tie this in a knot. I love to use ribbon on my cards. I think ribbon or baker's twine is the perfect finishing touch. And Stampin' Up! Ribbon is really nice, you guys. It's really easy to work with. Oh my gosh. I did not have this very tight at all. So let's try this again. There we go. And then you can tie it again so we have a good secure knot. And then I trim the ends. I think it wants to go this way. There we go. Just got to work with it a little bit. And then going to say we must celebrate and where did I put my here we go coming in with old olive using a scrap of whisper white I better now when you're using small stamp sets I like to double check before I stamp and make sure I don't have a halo around those words So we've got our sentiment stamped, coming in with our punch again, remembering my tip, look at what you're punching so that you know it's in the right place. And I want to get a mini dimensional here. Need to open a new pack. Secure this down. There we go. So there's the front of our card. 
But remember, I also love stamping the insides of my cards. So I'm going to use some of these other adorable stamps with my Whisper White layer here. And I'm using Chocolate Chip for this little snail. Chocolate Chip is another color that's retiring. So if you like this color, do not wait because these colors, again, they are gonna fly off the shelves. Make sure you stock up on your re-inkers too. And I'm stamping happy birthday and the snail in chocolate chip. And I am bringing my fern from the front back to the inside. And then we've got some confetti and I'm going to stamp off before I stamp this. So that just basically means that I am getting some of that color off so it's a little bit more subtle. And now we just mount on the inside. Again, and when I post the replay of this, I'll have all the dimensions for these layers in my blog. And there we've got the inside of our card done. That one turned out really cute and really simple. Again, we're just outlining with our watercolor pencils and then blending. Cute, huh? What do you think? I think that one was easy it turned out really cute and now I need to just clean up my mess for the final card now this card you may have noticed if you're watching my Facebook or my blog this next card I uh, made for the Global Design Project Challenge. And I'm using my watercolor pencils again. But I'm going to use them in a different way. So, we're using Petal Palette stamp set. This is probably my second favorite stamp set in the Occasions catalog. Right now, it's bundled together, so you get 10% off when you buy the stamp set with the dies. Okay, so these are the dies uh, that come with it here. Petals and more thin lit dies. And then this is a two set stamp set, so it's a big one. You definitely get uh, your money's worth with it. I already have some of the pieces die cut here because I figured you didn't want to watch me run a bunch of stuff through my big shot. Now, this card is different when it comes to our watercolor pencils because we're coloring on a darker uh, cardstock. So we're using crumb cake. <clears throat> and so instead of our typical watercolor paper, 
we have a dark paper. I'm looking for my black ink pad. I lost it. This memento pad should work just fine. And I'm going to show you how we get kind of a shabby chic color on our dark crumb cake here. Okay, so showing you this on the bird. I need one more colored pencil here. Yes, the yellow. To get the soft color for the card, which I'll show you when I'm done, when you're coloring on this dark color, the first thing you're going to want to do is come in with your Whisper White watercolor pencil. And I'm just coming in and I'm shading the open areas with my white. Now I want to add some color to my bird. So I'm coming over the white area. And now I'm using the Bermuda Bay. And then where I want more shading, I just make it a little darker. And if anywhere gets a little too dark or we want to blend it, I come back over with my white. And then we can just softly blend. Now the rest of the card has some yellow and I wanted to bring that in. So I just came in with my and added a little bit of yellow color to his belly. I think this really makes these colors pop on this dark paper. Again, you can blend by going over with a little more of this white. And I'm not using my aqua painter at all. Now, this piece I need to die cut. I did the same with the piece for the flowers that's going on here and it makes it so much easier to see this yellow on the roses as a bright yellow on this dark paper. Um, it's really popping because I went through with that white watercolor pencil first and kind of set the palette for it. Okay, I'm going to die cut this bird. My big shot's over to the side of me. I'm not going to make you watch me do that, so I'm just lining up my die on my magnetic platform. Running it through my big shot over here. If you guys do this but when I get new dyes I buy uh, heat vent covers the magnetic heat vent covers and I replace the sticky two-sided tape paper that's in there with the, the magnetic sheets and it makes storage of my dyes so much easier okay I also have a blue layer that I'm going to use my garden trellis embossing folder on run that through the big shot I 
love this embossing folder. Isn't that pretty? You can use either side. We've got our crumb cake card base. Okay, here's the tip I almost forgot to tell you. So I've colored um, my white colored pencil. We've colored this all in. I want to show you a tip for really making this pop on your crumb cake base. I've got a stamp and blend here. I'm going to use the fine tip point of the blend. And I'm going to outline my stamp. I should say outline my image. I'm using light crumb cake and this is really going to make the color on these flowers stand out. I think I found this by accident one day. So we're just tracing the edges. <clears throat> That's the other thing is um, there are a lot of people who like to do those coloring books for stress relief. Um, if you're a colorer, these Stampin' Blends are awesome and watercolor pencils because you can make a card to send someone and get in your coloring stress relief at the same time. So can you see how much that pops now compared to before? It gives it kind of some depth and dimension. So that's just a tip um, for kind of making those pieces really stand out on your cards. And you can outline your stamps on white in this light crumb cake and it does the same thing. It really makes it pop. I'm gluing down my embossed layer. This card uses a lot of layers, guys, so next, come in here. I am learning to love layers. I think that they add quite a bit to a card. And I'm also learning that with these intricate layers, I can just use tape to secure them down because you're never going to see that. This is going to be covered up. When I'm doing layers, kind of poking out behind things, I also like to use vellum. It is a subtle, softer look. And of course we've got a beautiful, soft color card here. And so I think vellum will add the perfect soft look. Now I want these layers to not be intermingling and tangling with each other. So I've taped the yellows, this is Daffodil Delight, I've taped them down to my card base and I'm just figuring out where I want the other layers here.
them to the left. Placing them and then I'm taping those to this card front layer. Once those are situated, bring in some linen thread. And I want a double wrap, double bow on here. So I am gonna go here with my linen thread. I think linen thread is my favorite for just making a simple bow. I love the natural texture of it and it's stiffer than Baker's twine so it's really easy to work with you guys like super easy and I'm going to show you here in a minute you can curl the ends of it really easily too which makes it look kind of delicate and pretty and placed in the right area. So we're just going to tie that in a bow. You arrange, get my tail through there, what size you want your bows, of course, tug on your ends. And then once I've got it set and the edges, the ends are trimmed, you can curl this with your bone folder just like you would curl ribbon when you're um, wrapping a Christmas present. See how easy that is? It's pretty cool. All right. I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals and get it adhered to my card base. My uh, backs are sticking here. All right. Get this placed secure. <clears throat> and now we're going to add our bird. Cute. Now I had a scrap here. Give me one second. I need to find work. a scrap of pool party. And I've stamped best wishes in pool party on my pool party cardstock. And then I've shown you this tip before when you want your words to not necessarily be arranged kind of in a row here like this. I like to cut around them so I can place them wherever I want. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to do with the sentiment. Stick some mini dimensionals on the back here. And then uh, we're going to fill in this open space with 
these trimmed words. Leanne is asking, what are the branches called? Leanne, those branches come from the petals and more thinlets. It's this branch right here. All right. There we go. So our card front is done. Now for this particular card, I don't think I'm missing the inside piece, I think. Let me grab it, give me a second. Okay, so we've got our inside layer and we're gonna stamp now. I actually think I like the inside, how I stamped the inside of this card just as much as the outside. So this saying is from the same stamp set. It says, some things are just meant to be like the two of you together. And I'm stamping in the pool party ink on pool party paper. And then I came in with coming in with my flowers, stamping over the corners. And I think that looks so pretty and elegant. Don't you think? I love it. Okay, and now I'm going to put this on the inside of my card. Crumb cake and pool party is definitely a great color combination, Charlie, and I agree. All right. And this card is done, too. What do you think? Do you love it? I think it's so pretty. I love this bird, and I love these flowers. So, we've got our projects from tonight. We've got our layered watercolor pencils, uh, light on dark color that really pops. We used our watercolor pencils for our adorable We Must Celebrate friends. We used a watercolor wash for the background of our summery bonfire and drinks card. I'm going to call that Sue. And of course, we colored in the sun here as well. I took up a lot of your time tonight. I knew that this would get a little putsy, but uh, so I only did three projects. I hope none of you mind. Thank you for joining me tonight, everybody. Um, I really, really appreciate. Remember to share my video. Remember to um, use my host code when you order from me. That all gets you entered to win a prize. And check out my blog tomorrow for my blog hop. And then later this week, I'll post all the dimensions for these cards. I so appreciate you guys showing me the love with all your likes and hearts and smiley faces. It just really makes my day. So thanks again for stopping by. I don't see any more questions, so I think I'm going to let you all kind of wind down for the night. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Happy Wednesday.